Southern Chicken and Dumplings. One of the best comfort foods ever invented. And uh, most of the time people say grandmother's chicken and dumplings, especially for Southern. Well, I'm from the South and I had a grandmother that made some excellent chicken and dumplings. I mean, people came to get them. They were that good. Now, it's a little hard to replicate what my grandmother did, and, and I'll, I'll tell you a short story, which is 50-something years ago, when I was four, five years old, one of my most vivid memories that I ever, that I ha have had to the day is uh, going out in the yard or hanging out with my grandmother, going out to get a chicken. And uh, she had a chicken coop and a chicken pen, behind her garage and she went in and the chickens were running and scattering and she was going to get a chicken so naturally they were scattering and a few minutes later she came out with one and I'll never forget it in my life <laughs> there's no way I don't know if I ever even told this story but she walked out with that chicken and uh, there was a stump or a, a log and uh, my sweet little grandmother, about this tall, that wouldn't harm a flea, did not bat an eye. I, I don't even know where the hatchet came from. I, I never saw it till it was on its downward swoop. And that is where I learned what running around like a chicken with your head cut off meant. And uh, it was really impressive. It was quite shocking at that age. I think she realized that and she didn't... In fact, I never saw her do it again. Now, my Aunt Polly did. I, I, I used to try and go watch. It was interesting. A chicken with its head cut off does run around. But that leads to the problem of trying to replicate grandmother's chicken, or chicken and dumplings. You, you really can't. I, I don't think. Well, I guess you could, but not, most people don't. So there's a hundred different ways of doing it. There's a lot of theories on it and a lot of different ways of going about it. I think, though, as long as you get your chicken decent and buy decent chicken to cook with and get the dumpling right, there's the trick. And there's two different kinds. There's flat and then the dropped. And she, the way I remember it is that she made different ones at different times, maybe for different recipes, but I remember them as flat. And thanks to my, which I didn't get my, my grandmother's recipe. I never watched her, never stood there and watched her make them. I never got her recipe and thought they were gone forever, and I guess kind of they are, but I have a sister-in-law that came over a few years ago, and they were as close to my grandmother's dumplings as I had even came close. Nobody's ever came close to them but her. So I was fortunate enough. I asked her for the recipe, and she gave it to me. Kind of shocking how simple it was. So I've been making them since then, and now I do them in my Ninja Foodie. So I'm going to get that started. I'm going to show you what I do to make the dumpling, and then I'm going to give you a few explanations of how the chicken can be done different, easier or faster, or as long as you want to go. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. But you get that dumpling right, and I think that makes most of it. That's, that's quite the honest truth. So y'all hang on. I'm going to bring y'all around here and show you what I got, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to try and get this explained as fast as I can and not harp on too many things as no more than I have to, which is there's a lot of different ways to get that broth. And I think a lot of people think that means a lot, and I think it does too. And I really think that fresh chicken out of the backyard does something that you can't do unless you do that. Well, one way, if you want to spend, you know, if you really want to get a lot of time into it and try and do it everything you can is do a whole chicken in your Ninja Foodie or in your, in, or any pressure cooker and make your own broth, maybe two chickens. Just, just, the main thing is cooking the chicken a long time to where the chicken's cooked out and, and all of it goes into the liquid, you know, pretty much. And the chicken, maybe you make chicken salad or something, but it's, you know, it's, it's not as good a chicken to eat. So you can do it that way and make your own, and make your own broth and all that. Or you can use this. And this, there's nothing wrong with this. If you ask me, I, again, you get the dumping right. You got, in my opinion, you got about eight, 80% of it. Now the dumpling, the trick to that, now I don't make fresh, I don't make dumplings. I'm sure like my grandmother did and me and my sister-in-law both. She's the one that told me about this right here. I can't find anything wrong with it. It makes a dumpling as good 
as uh, my, my grandmother's. I, I still say it's really, really close. Yeah, it might be a little bit off, but it's not enough to know. And I also use uh, skinless, boneless chicken. I'm, I'm, using, I'm relying on this to give me all the fat and the, and the bone broth and all that. And, and again, you can go as far as you want, but I use skinless, boneless chicken. And that makes it easier, faster. I'm not going to use all of that, by the way. I'm going to use a couple of pounds of it. And then, for a little more flavor, I put this in it. I put one can, and it's look and feel. Because I'm going to put both of these on top of that chicken. And then I'm going to add this till I feel like it's right. And it's look and feel. Maybe one, I mean, one for sure, maybe two. I got both of these cans out, and this is just something... I'm adding to this. It really doesn't matter. I don't think it would make a hill of beans, but here you go. Here's what I've found. These are both Campbell's condensed soup. I, I can't find any differences. It, it, it doesn't stay. They're just cream of chicken. Now, maybe this healthy request or something because this is 70 calories and that's 120. And I've read the ingredients and they're a little bit different. So I got a feeling you'll get a little bit different result out of it. I'm using that. That's the one I'm using. Uh, it's got the most calories. I, I don't know what other... It says it's great for cooking, so I'm using it. All right, so... And I'm going to put this half stick of butter in. So, we're going to make the dumplings in here, and we're going to do that first. I'm going to make your dumplings first, my sister-in-law says. And uh, I believe her that if you make your dumplings, get them rolled out and get them cut up, and then let them kind of air dry while you're cooking your chicken and getting everything else ready. It helps them because they, they lose a little of their moisture. And if you think about it, you're boiling a, pretty much a biscuit dough. Well, it is a biscuit dough because I'm going by the directions for biscuits right here. So you're boiling a biscuit dough. So you want the moisture. In other words, it don't need the moisture. So helping it dry out, I think, gives that outer layer a little bit of different texture. And it leaves a little, it takes some of the moisture away. So going to get that going and I'll be right back. Y'all hold on. Okay, so I just wanted to show this right quick. This is nothing but... Uh, just a strainer and although I've got a couple of other devices it seems to work just as good now it does work well with this but I mean all you do is to sift your flour is that right there you just bump it around knock it up and down and you'll see it in fact we got to have it on this board right here so you just you can see about how it's doing it's doing fine in fact I'm gonna go ahead because this all has to be done and get that ready to put the dough on and no need you watching but you see the you see my point you just uh sift that through that strainer but anyhow be back in a second okay so if you look right here there is the direction well there's the the amounts i'm using two and a quarter cups of all-purpose bisquick and two-third cups of milk now there's the bisquick here's a two-thirds cup of milk and all i'm going to do is pour a little bit of this in at a time and uh, and as I do, I'll mix it up a little bit. You just don't want to get it too loose. You want to kind of just work it a little at a time. It's easier to uh, uh, do it that way, add a little milk at a time, than it is to uh, try. You know, if you dump it all in there and you got too much, then you you got to add. Well, actually, all you got to do is add more flour, but it's still, it's easier to just do it this way. And by the way, I'm using 2%. Uh, I always have, because that's always what we have, and I've never had a problem. I don't know if it even means if it wants whole milk, but that's what I use, and I've never had a problem with that. So, But you can see, all I'm going to do is make this to where I can eventually get it out of there and put it on this, uh, on this board over here. Now, you want it kind of dry. You don't want a real loose, uh, you know, dough. But it takes just a minute to get it all mixed. And it's getting pretty close right there. When you get like that, you have to be real careful on how much milk you put in there because you'd be surprised how fast it'll go from just about there to way too far. So we're going to hold it right there. Hopefully that's going to be enough. And... I think I'm going to call that right there done. So, get in there with my hands now just a little bit, and that is definitely it. That is what I was looking for. So you can see, I mean, let me see, you can see there's a little bit of milk left, but I, my point is it's hard to hit that two and a quarter to begin with of uh, flour, but there's what I'm looking for. That's it. 
and I'm not going to do any more to it than that right there. I'm just going to lay it on this flour, and then I'm going to get my rolling pin. I'm going to put a little flour. I got more flour right here, where all I got to do is this right here every once in a while if I need to. We're going to roll that out. So I got to find my rolling pin and be right back. Okay, so here we go. We're ready to go. Now, I will say right quick, I put a towel down underneath this to help it from moving. I don't know whether you need to know that or not. So I'm just going to kind of start it, flip it over a couple of times, and start it out with my hand, and roll it out. I'm going to move this where I won't knock it in the floor. And we're looking for an eighth of an inch or so. That's what everybody says. It needs to be fairly thin because it swells quite a bit when you put it in that boiling water or boiling broth. So, it's common sense. You just roll it out till it gets fairly thin. <laughs> I'll try and show you, making sure you can see what I'm doing, and you can. But as you can see that, there's nothing wrong with this dough. I mean, you can make it out of flour, and I think you use baking powder and all that stuff, but nothing wrong with Bisquick. There may even be some out there. But Bisquick works fine. Got no problem with it. I wish I had a little... My board was a little... I'm about to run it off my board, but I'm not going to get it much thinner. We're really close to what I want anyhow. I really would like to not shove that in my floor. But it will not be the first time. Positive it won't be the last. So, calling that, that's it right there. We're calling it that. Now, once I slice it, maybe I can show you some of that. So I got to get a pizza cutter. It doesn't hurt. It's going to sit there just a second, but I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a sheet pan. In fact, I'm going to dust it a little bit. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Just dust it a little bit with flour. And, uh... Cut these up. So all you got to do is this right here. Again, I have to make sure, and you can see me. Now, a lot of people like an angle on them. All you got to do is cut it at an angle. I'm not, but you can. Oops, that might be a little thin. <laughs> it won't matter. I promise you, it, 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 it'll work fine, even if you don't cut them right. Just like that one again, I cut wrong. I mean, if you wanted to do the angles like people do with a fork, you can just cut on an angle. And to be honest with you, they swell a good bit. I, I don't like mine long. I, I might be in a little bit of a hurry here. I always am when I'm videoing. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit, but I'm trying to get one inch squares or so and it's all preference you know something i mean that's the difference in everybody's dumping and that's the thing i'm gonna put a little dust on top of them just because i don't want them sticking i'm about out i should have put just a little bit more in there but we're good and then all we're gonna do is put them over here on that and uh in fact i've got a little scraper thing i'm gonna get them off of there with instead of having to do it on my hand so I'm going to do that, and then we're going to start on the chicken. So y'all hold up. I'll be right back. Okay, so just, whoops, I don't want all of that flour, but it's not. It doesn't matter. To be honest with you, that's part of what makes the uh, the broth. So if you get a lot of flour, it just be a little thicker, which, honestly, don't hurt. But I don't know why I'm showing all this. It's common sense. We're going to put those over there, and those are two... As my sister-in-law says, air a little bit and dry. And I think that comes from her grandmother. Her grandmother makes as good a dumplings as my grandmother did, from what I heard. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit where they can get a little more air. And that's the general concept. That's all I'm doing. So now all we got to do is start our chicken. But once this right here is done, there's a, bit, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Even a rotisserie chicken, just a lot of times a rotisserie chicken's hard to find that hadn't been seasoned and I don't like I don't know lemon pepper or whatever they put on them you know a lot of times but once you get this right here done and you get some chicken that's good and a broth use a broth so you get my point you get this boiling and you put these in and then you add your chicken but with a ninja foodie or any any pressure cooker instant pot or whatever you cook the chicken 
right. Don't overcook it and don't cook it to death to make broth. Just get it done, 160, 165, pull it off the bone, and uh, you have a excellent chicken. Now, I don't like white meat because it dries to me, and, and especially when you reheat it, if you reheat it a couple of times, it gets, it gets dry and tough and chewy. I love chicken thighs, so, and I like boneless skinless because I don't have to do anything to them once I cook them. So, anyhow, y'all hold on. Be right back. Okay, I did forget to show you the thickness, and there it is. And that is really close to what I think is perfect. So, now you know. Okay, so I'm going to call that two pounds of chicken. But all I really did was just kind of cover the bottom with the chicken thighs. So now, all I'm going to do is put, uh, and I've already shaken them up real well, but I'm going to put both containers of this on there. And you know what? It may end up as one and a half because that's that's a little more than I thought it was going to be. Is here 32 ounces? They are, but I'm I'm trying to get to about right here. That's all I'm trying to do. So that's what I'm doing. In fact, let's turn that around to where I can see my cup. Yeah, that right there is. Well, that's, I'm gonna put it all in there just because that's what I'm going to do. And that way, you got a set number and i think that it'll be fine i just it spooked me a little bit because i thought it was filling up too fast so all i got to do is put the lid on there and get it going so we'll do that and what we're going to do afterwards is temp it because i'm going to go less than most people most people cook chicken longer than i think it needs to be cooked but i'm going to use my temp wherever i'll find it before i come back here it is we're going to use this and make sure we're around 165 and if not i'll put the lid back on and do it again it's not a big deal this last time I didn't use this much chicken in five minutes was fine. I'm not sure I'm not going to have an issue this time because of it. Anyhow, we're going to lock the, seal the lid, hit pressure, leave it on high. Coming down to five minutes. We are off and running. See y'all in a minute. We're going to do a quick release and take a temp read. Be right back. Okay, so we are coming up on the end of the five minutes. All we got to do is this. Be right back. Okay, so there went the pen. Let's take a look at them. And they are, in fact, we're not gonna need this anymore. Well, we won't need it for a minute. But there they are, and I have a feeling they are plenty warm, or they probably don't need any more cooking, but we're gonna see. We're gonna make sure. I'm gonna pull one out right here. This is a pretty thick one right here. So let's see what they need, or if they need. And there's 165, one, we're well within the, the limits. We'll go deeper and see if that hurts or helps. And Anywhere I put it, we are well within range. In fact, 200 degrees is absolutely plenty. So there you go. Just so you know, five minutes is, is plenty of time to get to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, just to show you what I think is probably as good a broth as you're going to get. I mean, that's the real chicken broth from the thighs. And the Swanson chicken broth. I mean, that's going to be pretty... Again, you, you can uh, do something with a... If you raise chickens, it might beat this. But it's going to be close. So I got to get it on. So in fact, we'll do that now. What we're going to do is uh, hit... I'm going to hit stop. because I mean, hit the stop button because I like to start from where I know where I'm at. So I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to hit sear saute. I'm going to leave it on high and hit start. All right, now, I'll lower that high in a little bit, but what we want to do is it's got to be rolling. You want it to be a good boil going on before you start putting your dumplings in. Okay, I did forget one thing. I moved it over so you can see it a little better because I'm going to have to set that here to put those in, but I forgot to put my butter in, but no problem. It's in there now. Okay, so that took about five minutes for it to come up to pressure. What we're going to do is put these in. Now, some people do them one at a time. I just kind of let them go you know, try not to go all at once. <laughs> That's about it. And uh, I don't usually have a problem. 
and then just kind of put them in and let it come back to a boil and we're going to do this right here in a minute you know what we're going to let them sit just a minute i don't want to try and stir them till they've set just a second and you can see all the flour that goes in and that's kind of what everybody i've ever seen do it does you, you get a lot of flour so that thickens and that's why i'm holding up on the cream of chicken if it doesn't thicken up like i like then i'll add that it 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 probably won't need it the the, the flavor of the chicken is going to be there there's, there's no doubt you know and the uh, cream of chicken is there to add it if you need it and i'm just getting them in there they're not they're not submerged by any means but we're going to fix that and we're going to do this right here just kind of submerge them get them in that liquid and then see what happens right there and i'm afraid to do a whole lot till they get set a little bit but this right here helps too that lid and uh, that's off of another pan i have that i bought it's got nothing to do with ninja or anybody just come with a some other pan that i made work so get that going and i'll be right back okay so that might have been a minute and it's trying to foam a little bit so i'm going to open it up and i may lower that heat some but we'll see i'm gonna let it go with that uncovered for just a second and see if it'll come back to a roll but you see what i mean by by the swelling and and that'll go down it won't stay like that they won't stay that puffy they just do that i mean it's a biscuit i mean that's really what it is you're boiling you know so in fact i am gonna put the lid on it's not gonna hurt anything and if it does you know it's not a big deal but it's not going to we'll see you'll see in just a second we'll let that get to rolling back and if it tries to foam i'll lift that lid back up and do the same thing again but hey y'all hang on okay so i'm gonna say they've been in there maybe two and a half minutes total it's probably 45 seconds since i turned the camera off i, I probably could just leave it running but everybody hates a long video and i do too and you can see it rising i hope you can see it coming up and i'm gonna stop that by lifting that lid just like that that's all you have to do and then stir it around a little bit again okay so that's about a minute on medium and you can see it's still foaming and getting really really hot so and this is probably five or six minutes in and i mean this is what you kind of have to do it only takes 10 minutes so it's not a big deal and i don't know if you can see what i'm doing right here but what i'm doing is pressing stop all the way off all right I'm going to press it on again, press saute sear, and I'm going to take it down to medium, to low medium, or L-O-M-D, press start. Now, I think it'll still be doing it, especially when I put the lid on, but that'll give it a minute to slow down a second. And then all I'm, going, all I'm doing also is right here with these scissors, I'm just cutting my chicken. Let's see if you can see that. I'm going to hold the camera where you can see it's this right here with just some kitchen shears i don't do anything to the fat the gristle or nothing i just cut it up it goes in my uh everything that's on those boneless skinless thighs goes in my uh chicken and dumplings and that's just the way it is and my grandmother's was the same way they had you know a little bit of gristle and it's chicken and dumplings you know what i mean and in fact i'll say that too as far as southern chicken and dumplings that's what southern chicken and dumplings is <laughs> chicken and dumplings there there's not any uh vegetables not any carrots not anything or it, none of them none of the ones i've ever ate i shouldn't say that <laughs> none of the ones i've ever ate had anything in them but chicken and dumplings so I'm going to continue to do that. Let's see how this is coming along. Let's see if it's if that low medium help. I got to get the camera set back down. All right, let's see if that low medium help. And it did. It's just a good simmer. And that's that's where I want it for right now. I mean I think it's pretty close. Now, you know something I can tell by looking I'm probably going to add some of that cream of chicken. But I definitely won't be doing two cans, I don't think. But we'll see. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's about, I don't know, a minute. 
and you, I don't know if you can tell, well, you can, it's rolling. And uh, we're fixing to pull one of those out in just a second and cut it and kind of see what it looks like. We'll use this. So let's do that. As you can see, it's a good roll. In fact, the, the medium might be the, the one to go with once you get that foaming stopped, you know. But here is the, the star of the show, and this is what I say you can add chicken. You've heard, my, you've heard my spill on it, but I mean, once you get this down, the rest of it is somewhat uh, uh, simple. I mean, it's chicken and, and some kind of broth. And, and then you decide how thick you want it by using, if you need to, this, you know. If you don't, you don't. But here we go. Let's see what that dumpling looks like. I mean, the gravy's not bad. It's, it's a little thin. And all you really have to do, if you didn't want to add that, is lift that off and let it uh, reduce a little bit. But that is a dumpling. It's hot, but I'm going to taste it. That right there. I wish I had better light on it, but I think you can see it. And that is extremely close to my grandmother's. Uh, it really is. So, I'm going to add that chicken in. In fact, let's do that. Maybe that'll cool it down and stop from that roll, because I'm going to have to knock it back down to low medium. So, all I'm going to do is dump this in. At some point, we're going to put uh, pepper. I won't add any salt. I can tell already it's got plenty of salt, but it's going to get black pepper. There's no doubt. Chicken and dumpling has to have black pepper. Okay, so part of the reason I worry a lot about whether you can see it and all that is because yeah, I either forgot to rep press record or something happened, but all I did was to the what we had after I put the chicken in was this right here, one can. I didn't, here's the other one. I haven't used it, and I think I'm really close and I'm gonna show you how I how I come to that. Uh, one is you can just take this right here and kind of see how the stream looks of your broth. But the best way is this right here. You take a spoon and you coat the back of the spoon. It's gonna take both hands, and then you and then you see. Uh, I got to get no chicken on it. You see how it runs off that spoon. Then you do this right here, and you see how fast that it fills that back up. And you'll see what I mean if you do it a, a few times. If it's too thin, it's obvious. It runs, well, you won't even hardly coat the back of the spoon. There's a, there's a good coat on it. That's perfect. So one can with the mixtures I had today was perfect. So I'm not using that. That's what I'm calling my perfect uh, grandmother's <laughs> southern uh, chicken and dumplings. I'm going to let that simmer for about five or ten minutes. I'm going to get a bowl out, and we're going to eat it. Y'all hang on. Okay, so one last tip, because I think, and I think this is a big one, and it goes well with a lot of recipes in the Ninja or the Instant Pot, for it, matter of fact. I said, as soon as we got done with that last tip, I set it out of the container, out of here where it can cool. I set the liner on a trivet where it can start cooling a lot faster. Now, I'm still going to eat it. It's plenty warm. You barely can put your hands there now. I'm going to eat a bowl, but this is really for tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow's Sunday, and we've got several people coming, and we've got other things to eat, but this is going to be my contribution. <laughs> and uh, But my point is, I've got some uh, cedar planks that you cook fish on, is what I actually use, and they're in there on top of my glass shelves of my refrigerator. And I'm going to set this on there, and that'll protect it from the heat and, you know, to keep from breaking the glass. And I've done it quite often. I've never had a problem. So tomorrow when I come in, or actually before I go to church, I'll set this in here, hit keep warm, and when we get back, it will be. But we still got one more step. I'm going to eat a bowl of that and show you what it looks like. So y'all hold up. Be right back. Okay, so here, here it is in a bowl. And I got to, like always, make sure you can see it. But I promise you, as a guy from the South <laughs> that's ate them many times, that right there is as close, that is a, a perfect dumpling. I'll say it. It, it is. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. And I mean, I've already ate it, obviously. If you get the dumpling right, that's 80%, like I said. The dumpling's a big deal. 
Then, of course, the broth. It does. It all means something. You got to get the right thickness. You got to get it run off the back of a spoon, right? And uh, to get it what people expect for a southern chicken and dumpling. Again, which is just chicken and dumplings and, and some pepper and salt, baby. But I didn't add any salt. There was enough salt and everything else. But long story short, this is perfect. Uh, I don't think you'll beat it anywhere. Uh, very, very good. My grandmother's might have got it by a little bit, but I didn't need a hatchet <laughs> or anything. I just uh, did what I did with the, with some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And it was really quick and really easy. And uh, like again, though, no. you, you get that dumping right, like I said, and then you go, with, you know, you do as far as much as you want to. You can do a lot of things with the broths and stuff. So, anyhow, in the kitchen with jelly, uh, I appreciate y'all watching my video. I really do. Y'all come back to see me. Fix you some chicken and dumplings. Bye bye, y'all.